Well, here I am on the Gizzy. I don't know how much wind noise there is. I can hear quite a bit of wind in my helmet, but um, so I don't know how much is going to affect the sound. This is my my uh, brand new to me Gizzy Breva V1100. And I've only ridden it home. This is my first sort of ride out, really. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to meet my friend Neil. And um, I'm in six gear now, 40 miles an hour. <laughs> I love it, just trickling along. And we're going to go to the Motor Legends event outside of Guildford, we'll probably catch the tail end of it, and then we're thinking of going to Box Hill. <coughs> Excuse me again. My mouth's a bit dry. I think I was a bit nervous. I haven't owned a bike for a few years. <coughs> I've ridden some of my friend's bikes, Neil's, but uh, Always a little bit, a little bit nervy, and we'll see how the uh, Ghost XL cam is doing. I might need to face it up a bit more again. I don't know. I'll see how it looks at the end. This where it is. It goes to Milford in Godalming. And then I'm going to meet Neil at the uh, beginning of Compton outside of Guildford. This is a nice road. The Poodle Down. the bike so far. I've got um, a little bit of brake fluctuation on the front brake. There may be because it's been sitting for a while. I bought it from a shop. I did check it over before it came for they let me take it but I um, I think it's been sitting around for quite a while so one of the pistons might have uh, seized up a little bit maybe with some use it will free up, otherwise I'll be greasing the pins and having a look. I'm going to get a, going to get a uh, phone holder for the bike, which I'll use as a sat nav. I'm not sure, well, these bars are really good, but I'm not sure if I do actually need or what would be more comfortable with some bar risers, but I had a quick look online it seems like they're as rare as rocking horse teeth. So I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I've got to get used to the bike really first. But I think some bar risers would be good. This is a lovely a bendy road to get used to going round corners again. Watched a really useful video the other day on um, going round corners and it's like looking where you're going, kind of turning your head and uh, leaning the bike where your head's looking. It's important to look. Um, I've really, I really found that really helpful the first time I rode it back home two days ago 
going around corners and round roundabouts. And uh, just to turn my head, so not just to try and go into the corner, but to turn your head and your sort of body and the bike goes with you. I think I'm not explaining it very well, it's a very good video, I might put a link to it beneath this uh, beneath this uh, vlog. I reset the uh, trip the trip meter on the uh, on the dash and I'm watching the average MPG and already it's uh, up to 39.8 but I am in sixth gear at 50 at the moment. I mean that's that's what I prefer to do nowadays. It's just trickle around. Everything's a purple. On nice days and with some friends. I had a ZZR600 a couple of years ago and I hadn't had a bike for 10 years really and it wasn't me at all it just wanted to rev and go fast it was happy being a nutter but it wasn't happy burbling around town or just trickling and it was uncomfortable slightly the position being more crouched up um, so I only had it a couple of months I rode it about 4 or 5 times and sold it <laughs> um, have one till now. This is a, this is the next bike after that. Before that, I say in about what about 2010, 2011, 2012. I had a Yamaha 900 Diversion, and I really like that. That was like this, really. It was shaft drive. You could trickle around in town, and it had plenty of speed if you wanted it. And I got nearly 50 the gallon out of it. It was really good. I really enjoyed that bike, but I had to get a car in the end, so I had to sell it. And it wasn't practical, it was my only vehicle at the time. So... This is my... I do have a car as well, so this is just... This is just for a nice days, summer. Well, it's been a bit wet. <laughs> But nice days, going out with friends, just living life a little bit, you know, I'm not dead yet. I'll be 60 next year, and uh, still love bikes, obviously, and uh, it will give me a little bit of more of an interest. Things to do occasionally, just go out for a ride, especially as I think... Um, this is quite economical as well. It's nice in the biking fraternity when you're riding around. Most people give you a nod. And that's something I didn't realise I missed a bit. You know, it's nice if you ever have any trouble on the side of the road, often people stop and try and help. I had a really interesting chat, funny enough, with a guy on a scooter. After I bought it, I was in Farnborough and I was just coming home. I was stuck in traffic and uh, he pulled up alongside me and says, you know, oh, nice bike. We got chatting and he's only been riding since May. A very nice chap. And uh, he said he fancies riding his scooter to Turkey or something. I thought, yeah, good luck to you. Why not? I cycled to the south of France many years ago. I thought when I was doing it, oh, this would be perfect to lock a C50 or a C90. <laughs> no effort. And you can just 
enjoy the countryside. It's really nice to burble around the countryside. So that's it, so you can talk to all sorts of people. And that was like another reintroduction to biking, you know. Oh, oh. Just pull up and chat to someone. <laughs> Uh, I want the A3 now. Doing about 70. Da, 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 da. The, the wind is quite noisy. Even though I've got a screen, I think above 70, you still get a bit of a bit of blast. I'll set to see if I can raise the screen a little bit maybe. Yeah, the wind noise is in the recording. <laughs> I can barely hear myself, so I don't know what it's like on the right in the front. And maybe I'll have to remember to talk when I'm going slower. Uh, we'll see. I'm having a very comfortable ride. Remembering not to grip the handlebars too tight. Put them on the knees, slightly hold the handlebars. I can go straight all by itself. Just remembering all those kind of things. Getting used to it again. to move this left hand uh, switch a bit that way because I found yesterday that um, oh, watch the traffic uh, that every time I went to go to use the indicator I kept hitting the horn and it's got two horns on this it's quite loud which is very useful I think it's probably a very good idea I am remembering to uh, I'm remembering not to hit the horn though, to be honest at the moment, so maybe it's not so bad. But I do think it needs to come up a bit, just up a little bit. Just the switch gear, that's all. The clutch is fine where it is. Forty one point two miles per gallon at the moment. I think Neil's on the Vegas today. Could be wrong. And this is where I arranged to meet him by this gate. And I don't know, most of them don't nod as Harley riders, but they may be busy with the roundabout, of course. Let's see what I should do. Let's turn it off, put it in gear. I guess I'm So I'm waiting for Neil to turn up.
I might have to move the microphone up a little. It's really a test ride for the for the microphone cam, the ghost cam. What's time? Let's have a look. I like the fact it's got the time on there. 11.28. Yeah, you should be here any minute, I think. Then we're on 40 MPG, 40.5. The brother's only done 20,000 miles. So it's in pretty good nick. That's nowhere for a big engine like this. And I'll only be doing a couple of couple of thousand a year I expect she's not going to be doing too many miles over the years my intention we'll see is to have to have to have her till um, until she's too big for me to maneuver anymore she's quite heavy so let's have a look let's turn that off so here she is she's got a dominator aftermarket exhaust I did find yesterday coming back that it did pop and bang a bit. I don't know if that's normal with Dominator exhaust or or not. It's still got the um, collector box there with the uh, CO sensor and all that sort of thing. Because you can replace those with just stainless steel pipes. Don't know if that's an MOT file though. If you do that. didn't want to start immediately when I tried her earlier I don't know if that's heard about the uh, the wires between the starter and the relay I think that are not really man enough for the job and people change the wires got a give you rack I don't really like having top boxes on a bike I think it spoils the look a bit but it's going to be bloody useful to get one I think I'll get one in case I want to go somewhere etc uh, yeah, Brembo brakes, really good brakes, of course, world renowned. And it comes with the uh, stainless, um, what do you call it, pipe, um, a standard front and back. And uh, yeah, there she is. So I don't know if I've got much movement on the... No, you've got some leaning there, by the looks of it. So you can lean it forward a bit. Maybe... Maybe that would make a difference to make the air go up and over a bit more. Well, that's interesting. On these... If I loosen those... And loosen these... Perhaps it will... Go forward a bit. And... Uh, there's the screws on that. So the screws on there underneath. For moving the switch gear a bit. Definitely going to do that. If I can. Very nice. Really nice looking bike, I think. Yeah, overall very good. See, oh, that BMW rider was just checking, giving me a thumbs up, saying, I'm all right. And I was saying, yeah, I'm all right, giving him a thumbs up back. So it's giving you a bit of a tour of the bike. Ghost cam has got 11 hours of battery. I don't know how long the, it will be for, for my card to fill up. So I might turn, oh, this looks like Neil now. I think it is. Hey! <laughs> Looking good. Ah, oh, nice. A nice bimble down that road. Ah, good man. Finally, we're out riding together. Yeah. For all these years. Been here a while. Been here a few minutes, yeah. 
I'll just walk around the bike. At the same time, then, to get here. Hmm? If we set off at the same time. Yeah, I think I was 20 minutes, you're 25 or something. Right, okay. So, it's not bad. <laughs>